look at the world in front of me. He to grassroots development. She was sunny. I am all about peace, it's plus politics. He to grassroots development, she was sunny. Former Kajima Central Senator Shewu Sani has called local government autonomy essential for strengthening governance at the grassroots level and reviving local councils. Sani made these remarks during a recent interview. The federal government's lawsuit against the, the governors over local government autonomy has received Sani's support. This lawsuit filed with the Supreme Court seeks complete autonomy for Nigeria's local governments. Additionally, it aims to prevent governors from arbitrarily uh, dissolving elected local government councils. Sony believes this move by the federal government has the potential to revitalize development at the local level and solidify the local government system solidify the local government system. He emphasizes local government development autonomy. Local government autonomy is the sole is the sole path to rescuing local governments from financial hardship and stagnation. Sunny argues that poverty and insecurity plaguing the country stem from the dismantling of the local government system. He claims that most council leaders only appear at the offices when federal allocations arrive. He further, he further asserts that the lack of financial and administrative independence for local government has hampered the performance of uh, this uh, critical to health government. Sunny also endorses the federal government's proposal to eliminate, to eliminate state independent electoral commissions, six, Latif Fagbemi, the Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of Justice, previously proposed scrapping these commissions. Sunny states, quote, the scrapping of six is a positive step. He explains, due to institutional, institutional manipulation and the imposition of candidates by state governors, it has become impossible for it has become impossible for opposition parties to win elections at the local government level. The chairman, the chairman and staff of six are essentially agents of the state governors and the ruling party in their respective states. Joining us is a lawyer, advocate for good governance, justice and equity, Liberos Oshoma. Also joining us is the chairman, the Kwele local government area, River State, Samuel CK and senior legislative and senior legislative aide to the Speaker, Federal House of Representatives, Abuja, Comrade Inunuita Obit Samuel. Gentlemen, welcome to Plus Politics. Hello. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for having me, Yoshi. Fantastic. Uh, Liboro Sashama, I would do want to kick kickstart this, your, your uh, introductory opinion. Yes, I said some of us that have been clamoring for the restructuring of this country, um, we welcome this development with open arms. Uh, remember, um, the former president, Muhammad Buhari, did attempt to do this, but he did, he did it um, via executive order number 10 or so, or number five, I can't remember. And but uh, most times, um, the Supreme Court recently, in ruling on um, Executive Order Number Ten, that uh, granted autonomy to the judiciary, financial autonomy to judiciary, and the state executive legislative, held that um, you cannot use executive orders to amend the provision of the constitution. And so it is. I think it is in that light that uh, no, it was Executive Order Order Number Ten. I think it's in that light that the current Attorney General had approached the court. Under Section One of uh, the Constitution, um, Section Four and Five, 
Section 7 of the Constitution also that guarantees democratically elected um, local government um, chairmen and uh, offices, the democratically elected offices at the local government level. Uh, but I also think that the Constitution is a little bit skewed against the local government because apart from Section 7 and then um, the schedule where the functions of local government are mentioned that the states had taken over virtually, there is nothing spelling out the the offices and the functions of those offices, the way the functions of the state offices and provisions are made copiously for state government in the constitution. I think that was an aberration or an oversight. So, but this development also has signaled uh, a pointer to the fact that truly, if we do not get our local government autonomy uh, and democratically elected government at the local government level right, we can never get development right because what we basically do is practice the, the bottle system of government where everybody runs to the center. Even things that ordinarily local government ought to do for you, the governors have reduced local government to salary paying agencies. And so it is high time we all join our voices and come to the rescue of those at the helm of affairs at the local government for there to be autonomy. Uh, is there a bit somewhere there? As Democrats and those who believe that we are practicing constitutional democracy, when this issue was made available to our knowledge, we just knew that um, democracy has come to stay in Nigeria. Uh, with what Mr. President has done, he has shown once again that he is ready to take tough decisions to push us forward and to get dividends of democracy to the people at the grassroots. Mr. President, we at the grassroots commend you. We know that the power that be would want to fight this move, but we believe that if our lords really want democracy to work in Nigeria, because we don't understand why the governors will be too powerful in two fronts. One, the governors are too powerful to decide those who are holding the opportunity for a president to emerge by their contributions and their participation. Uh, whoever wants to be president of Nigeria, we consider every governor of the state very important. One, they have the largest of the states to gather the votes for them, and they will be considered as very important critical holders to decide who will be Mr. President. Or we go to the various states, rather than come and consult with leaders at the various local government level who are holding for the development of those local government level. These local government leaders are being coerced and intimidated into the bid of whoever is the man that is calling the shot at that particular state. But for us, we believe that democracy, with this move, if our lords and the Supreme Court will agree, will be dipping properly. Because if a man wants to be governor of the state, he will realize, one, he must agree with at least majority of the various local governments that make up his state. There's no more a situation where he will be the one to sit down at the comfort of his office to decide who will manage activities in the various local government to be able to perpetrate himself into offices. You can see what's happening in the United States where I come from. It's a sorry situation. Somebody swore to an oath to uphold the constitution of Nigeria, and before the very eyes of the entire nation, he has decided to denigrate and abuse the constitution of the of Nigeria. The Nigeria Bar Association has not raised any statement. Lawyers, senior advocates, and senior lawyers that will respect I have not said anything to say, no, you cannot. The constitution is clear about it. You must hold jack meeting before you touch or dispense local government funds. That a governor will brazenly order his attorney, uh, his general to write a letter to banks to bypass elected local government chairman as chief accounting officers to go and pay local government workers and even make orders to say that even politically elected officers like councillors, vice chairman, and local government chairman shouldn't be paid for the past 90 days. They shouldn't be paid. And so it has been. And you expect that local government to function as we speak in securities in the rise, not the local government in River State, because there's no support for the security agents. The governor wants to be the governor of River State. I also okay. want to be the chairman of the local government. Honorable chair. Honorable chair. chair, we'll get back to you. Um, um, the Senior legislative aide to the Speaker of the House of Representatives, Orbit Samuel. Are you available now? Uh, 
I know Abit Samuel, are you available? Okay, in the absence of, of Abit Samuel, let me go back to Liboros Oshoma. Liboros, any student of politics who understands how federalism functions across the world will know that the Nigerian federal state is somewhat of an aberration. Most federal states function on the basis of the center and the federating units. They, they tend to have two, tier, two tiers of government. In Nigeria, we peculiarly have a scenario where we have three tiers of government. Some are even more hungry that those tiers of government came into being as a result of some shenanigans that were prevalent during the military era when uh, the constitution was decreed into existence. So, uh, Liboros, from this position, how would you reconcile your submission that local government should be allowed to function in a manner that will seem that Nigerian federalism has not only the federal entity, the federating units, and the sub-sub federating units? Liboros, your take. Yes, um, first and foremost, but let me uh, take your mind to um, where you are presently. You are in London, and you know, even in London, the, the Prime Minister of um, Britain is a tenant of the Mayor of Greater London. The Mayor is like a local government chairman in that country. But if you take it a, a notch further, you go to America, I've had cause to visit many states in America. I was, I was shocked when I visited um, um, California. It took me, I landed in, um, I landed in the, at the airport in California. And I was going to, no, I landed at the airport in San Francisco. And and they told me, I needed to go to Los Angeles, and they told me that they would take me two hours flight from San Francisco to Los Angeles. That is in the same state. And, and that um, Los Angeles, California, uh, sorry, Los Ange um, San Francisco was a local government in uh, the state of California. And then I got to San Francisco, and I, I was taken to Oakland in San Francisco. And then I told the man I want to stay downtown because I love to live in downtown and my family. So we're in downtown Oakland. So the next day he said he wanted to drive me to San Francisco. And I asked him, I said, but I thought we were in downtown San Francisco. He said, no, we're in downtown Oakland. So we need to drive from Oakland to San Francisco. And I asked him, but this, with all these high rise and massive buildings that you have here, he said, because the governance at the county level is functional. This, is, this has nothing to do with the state government. This is governance at the county level, what we call local government. Also, I attended a seminar not too long ago where we had Miami Ports came to Nigeria trying to create a synergy between Miami Ports and um, the Nigerian Port Authority. During the introduction, after the members of the Nigerian team were introduced, you had Senator, this, uh, this representing minister, this chairman of uh, the board of MPA, the managing director of MPA and all of that. On the American side, everybody that was introduced was representative of the board of county commissioners, councillor of board of county commissioners, representative of the board of county commissioners at the port. I was marvel and I asked, I thought that um, people that were coming with senators, and since we have senators on our side, and they said, no, 
that the port of Miami is governed and run by the local county. That is an equivalent of a local government here. So, for me, you have the states, you have the federal government, you have the state government, you have the federal uh, state, uh, local government. But what we have consistently have is a situation where the federal government in Nigeria is like a local government, where the president is the chairman. Everything, they want to build road, it is the president. They want to build high rise, it is the president. They want to develop a new town, it is the president. Even the governors. Okay. Let's just say you're a bit, a bit cynical with that because uh, you know that Eco Atlantic, as massive as it is. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> yeah, no, no. Uh, what I am saying, that I'm coming to that. Apart from Lagos State and a few other states that are ambitious, which other states have been able to, to embark on such an ambitious project? And those states, for example, attempted dredging. Uh, Gile Gile port and they wanted to create a deep sea port. At the end of the day, he ended up at the level of MOU. That is a state. The local government cannot even attempt. Uh, but you, are, you have conveniently forgotten that a uh, state has a power generating uh, entity. Uh, sorry, a uh, state has a uh, has uh, <laughs> a, 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 a food refining entity that has moved from MOU to an existential That's entity. That 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 uh, crude refining, modular refinery, is owned by private sector. We just and those state percentage is like two percent in that refinery, and and uh, the, to and, 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 and the Dangote's refinery, the, one of the biggest in the world, the biggest uh, in the world. Six, Nigeria, six, Nigeria only has Nigeria only has twenty percent too. Oh, exactly. So and they, when and what they I'm saying, is, and they central bank dry. <laughs> <laughs> so. If you look at all of these things, the federal government already is run by a local government. It run run by like a local government. So, and that's why governance does not get to the grassroots. And I listen to the Equity Local Government Chairman, my brother from Equity Local Government Chairman, and he he spoke and aptly captured what is happening at the local level. The local government chairmen are holding office at the behest of the state government. Imagine a situation, a governor who is elected, we sack an elected local government chairman, we deprive elected local government chairman of collecting his salary. Yet, yes, we are fighting the federal government to grant autonomy to states. The states have pocketed the local government. So if we must need autonomy for states, we must first start by granting local government autonomy and then eradicate this state's local government, uh, 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 what do you call it, uh, electoral bodies and put in place a more robust electoral bodies that will be more transparent so that governors at the so, local level can be encouraged. Hello, hello Liberos. Uh, we will come to the issue of the state uh, independent electoral commissions. Don't worry, we'll get to it. Uh, let me go to the Honorable Chairman. Uh, Mr. Chairman, sir, I, I, there is a tinge or a dint of hypocrisy. Hello, Chairman. Is the equal local chairman, you, uh, local government chairman still available? Yeah, I'm available. I'm hearing you, sir. Fantastic, Doctor Wanosuke. Uh, there's a tint of hypocrisy in the in the cries from the local government chairman that uh, some of us are hearing from uh, River State. The point is that any puritanical constitutionalist would ordinarily. Uh, take on the face value what you are saying to be right, and nobody can fault that. No student of politics, no uh, puritanical constitutionalist would uh, would uh, disagree with the position that uh, majority of you, uh, chairman of local government areas in River State, are presently positing. But it's a bit ironic that under the immediate past governor, you allowed the governor to do pretty much anything he wanted to do with the local government while still people were chairman. Apart from that, uh, you have tolerated these nuisance for so long, and there is a, there's a principle in the law of nuisance that says once the nuisance has been tolerated for so long, it is perceived to be, to be normal. Uh, so I, I'm sitting here now, listening to you and I'm thinking if it were not for the for the political disputations 
that are now festering in in River State. Would a local government chairman dare to even be granting this kind of interview you are granting? And I praise your courage for it. I must salute your courage. And I know, you know, like some of your colleagues who have uh, decided on this occasion to be resolute for, for what should be right, uh, you must be celebrated. But I must also let you, be, let you uh, know that for some of us who are avid followers of the news, this seems to be somewhat hypocritical. Your take, sir. Okay. Uh, 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 first of all, sir, you know, you're considered... Is it the something about the 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 eye or the watchdog of democracy? You media personalities, um, your 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 presentations and your speech to the public would define or deepen democracy if we're moving forward or not. Now, um, that something was done in the past and it was done wrongly doesn't make it right. No, it doesn't make it right. Exactly. That's important, sir. It's clear, irrespective of. Whatever political divide you belong to, there is a settler who's called the Grand Norm, who is the constitution of Nigeria. You don't need to like me to be the governor of River State. You're the governor, you're the governor, you've been sworn in. You have a job to do. But that job requires you to do it with the provisions of the law. As I'm speaking to you, sir, I don't want to know what you think that has happened in the past. I was not the first local government chairman of my local government. But when I became local government chairman, I came with a purpose. And I've made my part. And I've told whoever cares to know, and I'm ready to challenge anybody. I have won all the awards. And I have my records speaking for me. Oh, I'm telling you, sir, in River State, as a boy, so we came, the former governor of River State took time to build leaders at the local government level. Because he said something. He said, I used to be Argon chairman. I agreed to become chairman of all local government chairmen in Commonwealth. And there are things I didn't do well, even if I won awards as local government chairman of Phobia Abbo. But I believe for us to build leaders, we should build leaders at the grassroots. Rule number one, local government chairman, I don't think you should grow trots. Before, it was a norm that when you become a local government chairman, you want to see the entire world. He said, sit back, work for your people. Today, go to River State. Local government chairmen have done projects, you know, that political words. Local government chairmen have provided leadership, you know, political words. It is now... Very interesting to be a local government chairman in River State. Now, this same local government chairman sat down and broke record politically. No political candidate in River State since the creation of River has won 23 over 23 local government in any election. I stand to challenge any leader in Nigeria to bring the records. These 23 local government chairmen we are put together as campaign coordinators of the sitting gov uh, governor of River State, but as, as campaign coordinators and local government election organizers, and they deliver 23 over 23. That's not even the issue. The issue is, you've won, you're the governor, but govern with the law. You don't disobey court orders. You don't go and the court is saying, don't dissolve local government. Just some motor shop has a ruling 24th of January 2024. It is there. The 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 order appeared by the governor. And the governor is going ahead to practically stop local government chairman from functioning, even when their tenure is still running. Okay, you have a problem with the House of Assembly. How does it concern the local government chairman? You do your part. Okay, if Mr. President is not from PDP. Mr. President is APC. The governor is PDP. Mr. President, my wake up home and say the governor is not playing his game. And start to seize the allocation according <laughs> to River State. And goes ahead to pay civil servants from Abuja. What kind of democracy are we running? And everybody saying he's quiet, he's gentle, he's humble. Okay, okay. Oh, they're oppressive. He's not oppressive. The thing about that is that somebody should do the right thing. Honorable Chairman, you seem to have the you, know, you seem to have the, the intellectual drum and you are beating it very hard. I can't, you know, on some grounds of uh, constitutionalism, I can't fault your argument. And um, like you also said, uh, which I fully agree with, uh, because something was done wrongly in the past should not be the justification for it to continue to be done wrongly. Um, but having said that, I'll come back to you uh, because uh, uh, 23 local gov uh, uh, government chairmen delivering 23 local government areas uh, is, a, is, a, you know, is, a, is an area we'll go to in, a, in, in, a Peru, in our view. I, I think we have a bit Samuel now with us. 
I fittingly saw an image of orbit somewhere. Is it there? The senior legislative aide to the Speaker of the House of Representatives. Are you there? Okay, uh, let me go back to Liboros. Liboros? Is Liboros still with me? Yes, I'm with you. Fantastic. Okay, uh, on the issue of the state's independent electoral commissions, many of us have known that uh, in practice, uh, at least uh, from the beginning of uh, the Fourth Republic, many of us have known that it's been more of a comedic agency, a comedic ele elections management agency than, than anything to be taken serious. I wonder why, as governor, the incumbent president tolerated the aberration uh, as national leader of his party, he tolerated it. But now, as the president, he has uh, he has stilled the backbone of the attorney general to approach at the Supreme Court, which is uh, which is procedurally right anyway to to touch the issue. What would be your response to the seeming? <laughs> The seeming, I, I want to be very careful with my words. Okay. Well, I understand you. I completely understand you. Um, like um, the Kwe local government chairman said just now, on the fact that um, you ran on the long lane for a long time does not stop you from taking a pause and saying, no, we have to do it right. Um, the president was a state governor and um, he understands the way the local governments are run, um, especially also now, in their time, in their time, it was even to say a little bit similarly better. But today, the aberration is is um, humongous and you know daring. I give you an example in Edo State during the, the, the days of Adam Soshomole as governor. Elections were conducted on Saturdays. In some local government, they were still awaiting results. By Monday, local government chairman were they sworn in in a kitty. At some point during the tenure of um, Governor Fiamme, local government elections were conducted before he became governor. He became governor and dissolved the entire local government and put in place caretaker committees. And as I speak to you now, 17 states, 17 states do not have duly elected local government officials. The ones that have elections are a selection process, not really election. What happens is the eyes have it, like um, the mockery you see in uh, some of our legislative houses. The governors have pocketed the state, uh, the state legislatures and also pocketed the entire local government in the state. So what that means, the governors have been turned to emperor. Imagine a situation where the president comes and says, I do not like the election that brought the governors into office. And so I hereby dissolve the entire state executive without declaring a state of emergency. Even when state of emergency has declared, has declared but by you and I have argued it that the president does not have the constitutional power to remove a sitting governor, even when a state, uh, or dissolve the state House of assembly, even when the state of emergency is declared. Not to talk of a state governor dissolving an entire local government and putting in place a caretaker committee. So, and then these are people who parade themselves as Democrats. And now, when you push it further, they put in place a state, uh, a kangaroo independent, uh, state independent electoral uh, body. Correct, which, on, correct on the voters. They did not put it in place. It is constitutionally stipulated. No, it is. But who, who put it in place? It is constitutionally stipulated, but they put it in place. They just put people there. And at the end of the day, I can tell you, I remember a local government election that was conducted in Lagos. People were grumbling and people were complaining. That should be around, I think, the tenure of Fashola. People were complaining. Journalists were gathered at state electoral office. And do you know what the party agents 
did. They came, collected the journalist numbers, and said, all of you can go home. Don't worry, we will uh, communicate the outcome of the result to you. And meanwhile, we're talking about state returning officer declaring results in the open glare of everybody. But in this one, they went inside, do, did what they needed to do, and then just announced figures. That is why you find out... Maybe, in some maybe, maybe, maybe you need to remember that in a particular local government area, uh, we are a very, very powerful and influential uh, party chieftain of you know was living at uh, the opposition party. So then son of uh of Bani a Puro. Of, of Bani Puro. I, I didn't say defeated, I, I didn't mention no name. Defeated a DACN in so the President Tenubu's President Tenubu's local government. And so at the end of the day, yes, when results were announced supposedly when results were eventually announced that election what we saw was a different was different from what people saw on the feed so and then the question now is that election that is conducted is conducted with the register from the national electoral body the state and uh, national uh, uh, electoral uh, committee the so, electoral so, committee from INEC. yes the, uh, INEC. so so where is really the independence of the state uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, electoral bodies. So where they don't even have a register, they don't have a register. They don't have a reg. Apart from the name, they don't have a register of their own. They just have an office and are dictated to by the governors. And that is why every governor that conducts local government election, this polit his political party will clear the post. I think for us to truly say we are practicing democracy at the local government level, that needs to change. We need to, and the only way we can. You know, bring people like Bola Abba to contest for election at the local government level is to ensure that the process is actually transparent. So that really, some people who has who has really, got you to really want to tell you really want to tell the world that uh, a, a sizable part of me is in the local government political business. Yes, you? because I know you contested for local government position at 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 uh, uh, in London when you were once resident in London. So, and I know that you are very very concerned with governance at the local level. So, some people would not want to go to Senate if they, they are sure that the election at the local government level will be transparent. That will now encourage, you know, uh, uh, better brains and stimulate growth at that local government level. That is the only way everybody will not be complaining. That is the but only way Labour will not breathe. Let me go to the Honorable Chairman the of the uh, Equal Local Government. Uh, in view of the position uh, you are posited now. Uh, let me go to the chairman of uh, the honorable chairman of the local government. Uh, chairman, your colleague, yeah. your colleague, without frontally doing it, but could be could be insinuated from his position that he, those of you who are now in contention with the with the governor of River State may have even attained the offices as a result of a system that is somewhat warped or dystopic. How would you respond to that? Well, first of all, uh, we had a president in this country that said, irrespective of the fact that I sworn an oath as the president of this nation, I want to truly say, as a true Muslim, and as a true leader, that the election that brought me into office was not up to the standard. And I vow to Nigerians that I will see as a president that I conduct an election that will be transparent for Nigerians. And that president didn't make it alive to keep up to that vow. May his soul rest in perfect peace. Yeah. That is President my right sharp man. Man. My my right sharp man. man. I want to see the brilliant. No, no, to be honest, liberals. You are smart. I know where you are. Are you a medical doctor or a, or a doctor of philosophy? He is a public communications award. Uh, honorable, I'm, uh, I'm honorable a doctor of philosophy in disaster risk management. Disaster uh, risk management. Yeah. I, yeah, I must give it to your intellectual persona. Your intellectual yeah, persona is so, so fluid. You are, you are, you are, you are the nickname they used to call Clinton is what I, I have in mind for you. Teflon and Ozike. Thank you very much, sir. So, sir, like I was saying, you see, we've, we've seen a situation where, uh, if not properly taken care of by the judiciary, there might be a breakdown of law and order in River State as created by the government of River State on its own, 
without anybody harassing him. This is a governor that inherited an organization called SEC by law. This organization, when you nominate them, they go to the House of Assembly, they go through screening, and they are sworn into office by the governor. Now, this governor has the SEC, he has the money, and funny enough, if you watch at the governor of River State, since he won at the Supreme Court, he has been going around Thanksgiving local government by local government. And there is none of his outing that you will not see my mom crowd. So extraordinary crowd that will win any election. The governor of River State, internal director revenue now is 29 billion. So finance is not his problem. The governor of River State has the backing of Mr. President. He has security backing. The governor can conduct a local government election and win. But we're shocked that this governor, who has stayed one year in office, knowing that by 17th of June, the certificate of return issued to me and my colleagues in 2021 will be obsolete, meaning we no more be qualified to answer local government chairman. And so the law said he should give public notice through SEC for 90 days for election to be conducted. This governor refused to do that. But the governor forgot one thing. Yesterday, you media people were calling assembly rubber stamp. Oh, this rubber stamp assembly. Oh, don't mind that they were approved. Oh, the governor, is, the governor is doing this. Oh, the governor will put them in the pocket. Now, an assembly has emerged in River State. I said, what's the only minute? Can we test the constitution? Can we really know if we're running a constitutional democracy? And everybody is which, saying, which of the, no. Which, uh, on the chair, which of the assemblies? Because we have an assembly that was proclaimed, properly proclaimed through constitutional order, but we have another uh, de facto assembly now that is in every material particular the real politic assembly of River State. I don't see okay. that. If you, that allow, if, you allow me answer this, if you allow me to answer this question because we're dealing with time, I know that um, Mr. Labrador Soshoma is a lawyer and is a public advocate. And he's aware that this incident is a matter that is before the public. Now, I said here that Justice Omoto Shaw has given a court a ruling on the 24th of January, and that ruling has not been obtained by any known court of appeal. The governor yes, yes. Even withdrew. Even the governor withdrew in the suit himself voluntarily. You understand? So uh, the question is simple. Four persons were suspended at floor of the house. One of them impeached. They are parties in the same matter before a motor show. So you cannot look up as governor and go and create your own constitution and say, this is my own assembly. Oh, the assembly is yeah. existing. I allow them to exist because I'm the governor. No, they didn't exist because uh, I'm the uh, governor. Uh, uh, no, Dr. Nosike, Dr. Nosike, I completely agree with you. I completely agree with you that five, five cannot suspend 27. That has always been my argument. Five cannot suspend 27, no matter how we look at it. I agree with you in that regard. They're not even five. They're not even five. They're not even five. They're four because one died. They are four. One died. Now, one has resigned. So they are not three. So, Mr. Oba, Mr. Oba, please. Let's, let's tell the public the truth for once. Because the people, a lot of people might be watching your program for the very first time. So you don't create the wrong impression. And moreover, you're in London. You understand? So the point is simple. The question is, can you be a party in a matter that is before a court? And you go behind and go and seek interlocutory injunction from another court of the same level, federal high court, state high court. It's not possible. The answer is no. It is judicial rascality. So the governor is just playing to the gallery. He knows that the known House of Assembly, as, as indicated by INEC recently, when INEC wrote to the Assembly over the notice of the death of their member that that seat has been declared vacant, the INEC wrote to Martin Sabewu Leland Assembly, which is the authentic Assembly of, of as we have today in River State, as proclaimed by the governor of River State, Fubara, that is the 10th assembly. So every other thing is just like embarrassment to democracy in Nigeria. And that's what we are saying, that you cannot put on, something on, on, on the respect chair. to stand. On every chart, even when, even when the, the members of the proclaimed assembly of their own, of their own volition would have been coerced to do that, then pressed a button that automatically, on the face of the constitution, uh, uh, declares them to be no longer members of the of the legislative chamber. And that's one of the lies that you shouldn't sell to the public, sir. There's no such thing. Even as you talk now, as a reporter, if you are presented a question, these persons, how can you convince any court or Nigerian that they are defected? You have no document to that. Even as you're talking. 
The question is not just a statement. You come and say, oh, I've defected. Defection is a process. Go, you write a letter to your nom your, your state party that I'm leaving based on A, B, C, D, this crisis. I'm going to this political party. You go to the new political party, they will instruct you to go and register at your polling unit. These are evidences. I'm more responsible. If it's done, more important, if it's done at the legislative level, there are house rules. There are cities of a day which will be done. Documents will be transmitted. Other papers will be written. These are evidences, evidences you should be careful before you join the public and give the wrong information. Oh, they are defected. No. Labrador is a shame if he's in the political party. If he wants to leave, you know that there's a process. So it's not an event. You can't just look up and say, that oh, I'm defected. That is not so a matter we have to discuss. They did. The, 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 first com the press conference that they did of their own volition, of their own accord, that press conference was uh, was not set up. Press conference, like press conference me, cannot help him. Let me quickly, Dr. Nosike, let me quickly say this. Um, the issue of defection is a matter of facts to be led before the courts. And like um, the doctor had rightly said, uh, defection, defection, there must be a letter of resignation and a letter of um, um, application and a, set of, a letter of acceptance in another political party. If I come now and I say I have defected and I have not resigned from the party and I also have not joined another party, how do you establish that fact that I have defected? Even when I come to the world and announce that I have defected, which political party that I defect from? So these are questions of facts that must be stated before the courts. Gentlemen, uh, unfortunately, is becoming, is becoming interesting and far more, quite more engaging. And the ultimate uh, dictator is uh, telling us to to wrap it up. Uh, Doctor Wanusik, the honourable chair, uh, equally local government area of River State, at least up until the seventeenth of this month. And if the if the proclaimed assembly's uh, uh, bill, uh, which ultimately they passed into law, to third majority, is to be respected uh, with extra six months. I guess in the absence of the governor doing the right thing, constituting the management of the state electoral management board, that is the, the state independent electoral commission of River State. Uh, I want to say thank you to you. Uh, thank you very much. Shoma, you have always been a soulmate. Uh, I just hope and pray that uh, the Federal Republic of Nigeria will take heed to some of the voices of conscience like yours. Thank, thank you, you sir. Thank you so much. Thank you, gentlemen, for this uh, for this opportunity of uh, gracing the show uh, virtually. Thank you. Thank you very and, much. Uh, this is where we wrap it up for today. I am still Bella Oba. Have a good evening.